For more on this, the president of the Constitutional Accountability Center, Elizabeth Widra, joining me now. Thanks so much for being here, Elizabeth. First of all, what do you make of Clarence Thomas's opinion in this case? It's the biggest expansion of gun rights in over a decade. The Supreme Court in 2008 recognized that there was an individual right to have a gun in self-defense in the home. And the question ever since that decision has been, what does that mean for all of the other ways in which gun violence prevention manifests itself in state laws? Does this apply to the types of firearms? Does it apply to places? And what we saw from the Supreme Court this morning was a dramatic expansion of the individual right to have a gun, to say that the New York law that had been in existence for a century was unconstitutional. And this is, I think, extremely concerning for gun violence prevention advocates, for people who feel unsafe. And, uh, you know, the Supreme Court's ruling did I, you know, the mayor of New York City did make the point that it seemed a little out of touch with today's uh, concerns about mass shootings, you know, it's c going through the history over and over. And the history is relevant, of course, but the Supreme Court, even in conservative Justice Scalia's opinion um, over a decade ago, recognizing the individual right to have a gun, recognized that there could be sensible gun regulations. And so the question now, an urgent question is, well, what does it mean for all of the laws that are on the books already and the laws that are being contemplated, including by Congress, to help prevent the extraordinary mass violence that we've been seeing in these in these shootings? And the fact noted in Justice Breyer's dissent that gun violence has surpassed motor vehicle accidents in the leading cause of death for children and adolescents. So the Supreme, help me through the technicality here. The Supreme Court states the constitutional right to bear arms in public for self-defense is not, quote, a second class right. So help me understand what exactly is a second class right. Is there first class rights? Aren't all rights <laughs> equal under the rule of law? <laughs> yes, you know, and, and I think, um, so this is a refrain that we've heard from the more conservative justices over the years, because after the Supreme Court in 2008 recognized that there was an individual Second Amendment right to have a gun, um, they took no action on state laws that were put into place on you know, the type of firearms, um, places in which firearms could be taken. And so the conservative justices, including Justice Thomas, who authored today's opinion, were very frustrated by the Supreme Court's inaction on those state gun laws. And then with the addition of more conservative justices by former President Trump, we saw a six justice majority that was more willing to expand gun rights and to take on these state gun violence prevention laws. And what Justice Thomas is saying there is that he thinks that the limitations on the Second Amendment individual right had made it a second class right. Of course, folks on the other side would say the right to have a firearm is a right that can and should be regulated under the Constitution, um, given the very r real consequence of that right, which could be and has been and will be deadly in many, in many instances. Right. Boy, a lot to follow uh, and a lot of fallout to come. I'm sure we're going to hear from uh, both sides quite a bit now. Elizabeth Weidra, thank you so much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.